Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Pubs video. Cheers. I thought uh, for this outing I would come to Mayfair, so I'm starting off at the uh, Ye Grapes at Shepherd's Market. The uh, date there of Ye Grapes says 1882, but the pub's website dates it back to 1742 when it was originally called the Market Coffee House. And um, this is this is Shepherd's Market, which was originally the site of the Mayfair, after which the district of Mayfair takes its name. Now, um, those of you who are only familiar with London geography based on the Monopoly board may think Mayfair is the name of a street, but it's not. It's in fact the, uh, the region bounded by Hyde Park to the west, uh, Piccadilly, the, the street Piccadilly to the south, um, and then I forget exactly the boundaries, but anyway, it's, uh, <laughs> it's sort of the bit to the east of Hyde Park and to the north of Piccadilly. The actual Mayfair ran here from the 1680s to about the 1760s, so just under a hundred years, and towards the end of its time became a bit rowdy and unseemly, and some uh, well-meaning, <laughs> depending on your point of view, property developers decided time was enough and uh, turned it into luxury flats or luxury, luxury mansions. Uh, of course it was uh, one of the Dukes of Westminster who seems to be sticking his oar in around this part of London and um, by the end of the 1700s Mayfair had become a uh, fashionable location for the gentry to live in in London. And for the last about 250 years it has retained its status as a very select, very exclusive, very expensive part of London. I suppose sort of similar to Belgravia in a way, kind of northern version of Belgravia, like Belgravia despite the eye-watering property prices there are a few interesting pubs that have sort of survived somehow between the cracks. Uh, I don't think it's quite the treasure trove that Belgravia is but um, I think it's, it's, it's worthy of an afternoon's exploration in its own right. The footman, uh, Mayfair. I think this is, uh, sorry, busy road. Um, I think this is quite an interesting pub. I don't know if it's um, very easy to get a sense of the former layout from uh, the glimpse of the inside just now. But uh, what one of the interesting historical quirks about this pub, which is in fact probably quite common, was that it used to have partitions uh, inside and all of the various staff of the different ranks of the big houses would all come to drink at this pub, I'm led to believe. So you'd have a combination of the, uh, the butler, who was the sort of highest order of the, uh, the household staff, down to the, uh, the, the grooms and the, the stable keeps, uh, the people who are responsible for looking after the horses, um, and, uh, and every, all the echelons in between, the, um, um, the, the, the kitchen staff and so on. They would all drink in the same pub, and potentially even some of the, um, uh, the owners of some of the big houses nearby would all be drinking in the same pub, but all sort of partitioned off. There would be all these dividers, and there's only a sort of little glimpse of that now by the, uh, the doorway of how it used to be, but in this not particularly spacious pub, all of these different um, workers in the uh, uh, Lugwa households would be um, all drinking together in the same pub, but all kept separate by partitions. A very weird uh, to imagine that today. Today the Footman is still nominally a pub uh, downstairs, I think quite a swanky restaurant upstairs, but um, I've certainly seen uh, worst abuses of gastro pubification of uh, a former nice old pub interior, and there's a couple of uh, interesting period features that still survive. That brings us nicely onto Barclay Square, which is uh, spin you around and take a look at the uh, very agreeable gardens in the middle of Barclay Square there, very much a sort of centerpiece of Mayfair I suppose. This takes its name from Barclay Castle in Gloucestershire, uh, which is also the derivation of the Barclay Hunt, which you may also be familiar with. Um, and um, there is some confusion about how to pronounce this and uh, I think the uh, local residents of this bit of Mayfair would definitely say Barclay 
but uh, people across the pond, and in fact also Cockneys tend to pronounce it Berkeley rather than Berkeley, and that probably ties in with the uh, Berkeley College in the US. And that does make for an interesting aside that I only learned sort of quite a long way into my adult life that uh, the word Burke, uh, I assume that's British English, I mean it sort of always thought that was just a charming way of saying someone's a bit of a prat, a bit of a wally, but it is in fact Cockney rhyming slang and it derives from the, uh, as said by Cockneys, the Berkeley Hunt. And I'll you know, leave it to your imagination as to what it's intended to imply. I should add, before I'm corrected in the comments, that to say Berkeley Square is named after Berkeley Castle is a slight oversimplification. It actually comes by way of a person, the third Baron Berkeley of Stratton, uh, who in turn took the family name from Berkeley Castle in Gloucestershire. Heading on to Bruton Place now, and that is in fact a nice segue because uh, John Barclay, the third Baron Barclay of Stratton, was from the Bruton branch of the Barclay family, uh, who take their name from the village of Bruton in Somerset, and no doubt that's where the name for this um, muse like street comes from. Jets, toilets, quick survey of some of the slabs who have been here Mel Gibson, Michael Douglas. Graham Norton, Ted Danson, Oliver Reed, Dame Vera Lynn. <coughs> the Guinea Grill, Mayfair. This is um, possibly one of those pubs that has that slight identity crisis of is it more a restaurant or is it more a pub, but uh, still feels sort of really quite pubby on the, uh, the ground floor at least, or the, the front part there. Um, Better still, I can show you the logo even, they have Harvey's. Sussex Best on tap, a freshly changed barrel that is in pretty good shape. Um, I was trying to stick to halves this afternoon, but um, you know, I've got to indulge oneself when um, come across Harvey's. It has a pleasing uh, feel of Victorian stability inside all the uh, the hardwood and brass fittings and um, it's uh, apparently there has been a pub on this site since the 15th century. I always take those uh, claims in London very much with a pinch of salt uh, but um, it has been a Young's pub at least since uh, 1888 uh, and um, great to see they're sort of very um, open-minded with the um, guest beers. Horses there, possibly Mayfair's oldest pub. I'm not quite sure how that squares up against the Guinea Grill that's claiming 1400s or 60s, 70s. Of, um, all, all of that probably needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. But I think I've, I have been there before, quite a, well, at least years ago when I was last there. Quite a nice pub, and um, I'm thinking at some point I should probably try and do all of the coach and horses in London a single pub crawl but um today i think i'm gonna skip over that uh instead head over this way to um um what is some um, i don't know mixed feelings about how this next pub is going to turn out but let's uh, let's see let's see when we get there it's a bit off topic but the uh catholic church of the immaculate conception on uh, i think this is farm street in mayfair i always thought this was rather rather a beautiful building farmhouse there. I don't know if the street takes its name from the house or vice versa, but uh, JFK visited here in 1961. I am of course on, uh, is this Farm Street or is it South Street now? I think we might be converging from one into the other, but I'm uh, in this corner of Mayfair to see the Punch Bowl, which is uh, I think a bit of a, a gem of a pub, unsurprisingly for this bit of Mayfair. Very very, very gentrified, but uh, I th think still not without its charm. Cheers. Do excuse the, um, the background noise, there's um, a van with its engine running right in front of me, but a um, bit of a sleb hangout traditionally, uh, at some point in the past was owned by Guy Ritchie and or Madonna or something like that. Continued to be a bit of a sort of place that slebs and all the kind of people who might appear in Tatler would choose to go if they're going to a pub. Uh, but surprisingly decent beer inside, uh, uh, both Harvey's, surprised to see that again, 
uh, Sussex Best, uh, second time in a row here in Mayfair, which is great. Um, but I opted for the other uh, bitter slash ale on tap, the uh, Butt Cum, uh, from somewhere near Bristol, I think that is. So uh, I've always been quite a fan of that. I didn't want to do any filming inside because um, just it has that sort of air of people who probably you know, value their privacy. But um, as I think I probably said uh, about another pub earlier on uh, today's outing, I have definitely seen worse excesses of gastro pubification in terms of the, uh, the interior design. It's obviously on the, the, the smart end of the scale but a bit less of the usual sort of hideous turquoise farrow and ball paint and all the other kind of tedious indicators of gastro pubbiness. Well, uh, you know, I, I feel like four pubs is probably a respectable number and I could end it there, but um, I'm going to press on to a fifth, mainly because I want to walk through uh, Mount Street Gardens here. This is uh, a bit of a hidden gem in London, I think. It's a, it's a little park, but it's a very... Uh, I don't know, manicured, um, pretty sort of little park. Not really. I, I can see a rat running across. The <laughs> Just saw a rat running across the path up there, trying to make it sound upmarket. There's a rat. Good old London, always uh, keeping it real. But yes, Mount Street Gardens. I think it has this particular sort of air of dignity and tranquility. There's something quite unique about it in terms of London parks. Slightly tropical feel there with those um, some kind of palm, is that in the middle of the uh, sort of roundabout over there? And these, uh, I assume Victorian red brick mansion buildings surrounding it. I think I'm going to make this the, uh, the final stop on today's tour, the Audley. Um, I haven't been here for a few years and um, I've got a feeling in the interim it probably has become decidedly less pubby. I think it was in the public eye at some point. Did, um, did the Obamas come here for fish and chips or something like that? I can't remember. So uh, it's, um, it has probably veered further away from its pubby roots. but. Uh, have these rather beautiful um, moulded tiles there, rather attractive, nice kind of uh, a bit like a Diocletian window there. Yeah. Hand and body lotion in a pub toilet. No. Well, um, I was a little unconvinced by the, uh, the paint job on the ceiling there rather than like uh, uh, a sort of self-indulgent current manager had allowed their small child to express express themselves in some manner over the year um, but that you know that's easily fixed uh, in a future iteration of of this pub and it was sort of heartwarming to see that actually um, that aside hadn't been too badly damaged uh, the interior atmosphere wise in its current incarnation um yeah i don't think that's a pub i would want to go to on a regular basis uh four pounds for a half pint of uh, fairly ordinary looking bitter which was uh, a record by today's standard but um, you know i suppose in a place that has cars like that parked outside uh perhaps i shouldn't be entirely surprised i seem to have meandered randomly to grosvenor square here in Mayfair, which was the uh, the former site of the American Embassy. Anyway, um, I, uh, I hope some of that tour of Mayfair's pubs was of interest. Um, and it, you know, I found it sort of slightly uplifting that uh, you know there are obviously no 100% down-to-earth pubby pubs really left in Mayfair, just like the other sort of well-to-do, well-heeled areas of uh, London that I've covered in these videos. But um, but you know that it is still possible to go and stand in a pleasant surrounding with a sense of history have a pint you know enjoy that sort of continuity of pub experience in uh, many of these places and um, you know i think uh, there are a couple of actually quite quite respectable pubs in amongst that. anyway I'm, I'm waffling um thanks very much for watching and i'll see you on the next one bye, -bye.